Training.com, CWI prep course. Come visit us at our website at train minus sign eng.com, pronounced training. This is our CWI prep course. This is a, as you go through some of these videos, these will be some snippets or samples out of our online training course. If you like what you see here in the sample section, come and visit us and take the course. Our CWI, CWE online part A video course, $149. It's um, self-study, CWI exam. Everything's an online video course. CWI prep course, module one, part one, weld inspection and certification. Learning objectives for module one. What you will learn in Module 1, basic information about welding inspection, industries using weld inspection, important qualities of a weld inspector, ethical qualities of a weld inspector, and personal certification programs. So um, hold on, we're going to go. Recommended reading. Uh, module 1, Welding Inspection and Certification. This is from Welding Inspection and Technology by the American Welding Society. AWS QC1, a standard for AWS Certification of Weld Inspectors. You can download that guy off the internet. Um, AWS 2.4 standard symbols for welding, brazing, and non-destructive examination. Um, you should get a copy of that. Uh, AWS 3.0 standard welding terms and definitions. I would not necessarily go purchase a copy of that, but if you can get a copy of that thing and become familiar with welding terms and definitions it will definitely be beneficial when you go to take the test um, AWS B 1.10 guide for the non-destructive inspection of welds AWS B 1.11 guide for visual inspection of welds and ANSI 249.1 safety and cutting and allied processes recommended reading list Uh, course modules. This is a list of course modules that we're going to cover during the time that we spend together um, going through the preparation, getting everybody ready for the certified weld inspection test. Um, you can see module one, which we're working on, is weld inspection and certification. Module two is safe practices for welding inspectors. Module three is metal joining and cutting processes. Module 4, Weld Joint Geometry and Weld Symbols. Uh, module 5, Documents Governing Weld Inspection and Qualification. Module 6, Metal Properties and Destructive Testing. Module 7, Metric Practice for Welding Inspection. Module 8, Welding Metallurgy for the Welding Inspector. Module 9, Weld and Base Metal Discontinuities. Module 10, Visual Inspection and Other NDE Methods and Symbols. It's a lot to digest, but we'll just uh, approach it with uh, the theory that uh, I used to work for a guy, and he's like, how do you eat an elephant? I didn't have an answer, and he said, one bite at a time. We just got to keep trucking on it. So that's the way we're going to approach this. We're just going to approach eating this elephant one bite at a time. So this is a list of stuff we're going to grind our way through, and Hopefully when we get done with it, you'll have a better understanding of the welding culture, 
language, vernacular, vocabulary, um, and this course content. So that's where we're headed, people. I guess the big question here is, who is the welding inspector? Well, if you dig through the book, it's going to tell you that the weld inspector is the overseer, a specialist, or a combination of an overseer or specialist. You might end up being, you know, a guy that's overseeing the quality. You might be a niche guy that only This isn't really part of the book, but it kind of is. Um, the it kind of ties into ethics and who welding inspectors work for. Who you know that's the question. Who do you work for? Yeah, you work for your company, and you need to get things out the door and get make sure the welds are signed off. But really, who do we work for? And th this is one of those um, societal ethical questions that I guess I kind of. I'm going to throw in as I jump on my soapbox here. In the United States, and I guess the Western world at large, the welding inspector works for the public. Yeah, you're getting your paycheck from Fred's Welding and Auto and Barbecue of, you know, Lubbock, Texas, or Butte, Montana, or whatever. But who do you work for? You're inspecting bridge parts. You're working for the public. You're going to be driving over that bridge. Your mom's going to be driving over that bridge. Some random person is going to be driving over that bridge. Um, you know, if you look at the third bulleted item here, bridges, power plants, chemical plants, buildings, and nuclear facilities, that's just some of the things um, that you might be looking at. Ships, um, airplanes, all kinds of things like that that you could be doing inspections on. There can't be shortcuts when it comes to ethics. You're going to, as a welding um, inspector, you're going to make some calls that are just not popular. You're going to have people mad at you because you had them cut out what they thought was a perfectly wonderful weld. And it didn't meet the standards that you needed it to meet. And it's not you needed it to meet. That contractually, code-wise, specification-wise, that weld or material didn't meet those requirements. So you have to make a call. Your brother might be making that weld a friend of yours, a guy you went to school with, your cousin. Doesn't matter. Your job, you are ethically tied to doing what's best for the public at large. That's the bottom line. Um, like I said, any of these things go wrong, bridges, power plants, chemical plants, offshore oil rigs. I mean, there's a million different things that welding inspectors look at every day. And basically, they're looking at it for the public at large. You are working for the public. You're, like I said, you're getting paid by somebody else, but generally, you're working for the public. Nuclear power plant, a weld goes wrong. You've got a Chernobyl and there's an area of the United States or Canada or wherever that is uninhabitable for thousands of years. Fukushima in Japan. And not that that was due to a weld, but I'm just saying. Um, there's a lot of these things that if they go south, it's a very nasty thing. And you are the person that um, is putting your professional expertise and your name on the line to sign off that, hey, that was good. You're signing off for the public. So just kind of an ethical rant there that I thought I'd throw in. But, you know, this is something when you're out there in the field and you're um, inspecting welds and doing the certified weld inspector employment thing, these are things you need to keep in mind. So ethics. Ethics are very important to the weld inspector. Important qualities of weld inspectors. Professional attitude, fair, consistent, inspection decisions based on fact, good physical condition, 
um, good vision. You know, and I'll, I, I just read through them, but let's go back and hit them. Professional attitude. You need to be professional. When you go out and on a job, you can't be, you know, acting like a, I don't know, in an unprofessional manner. It doesn't bode well for the, doesn't do anybody any good, any of the rest of the profession, you know. Um, you need to be fair, too. You can't be calling, you know, this guy's welds one way and another guy's welds a different way. You need to set that strike zone and you need to set it fairly and be consistent about it. Um, inspection decisions need to be made based on facts. You can't be calling in, well, I saw it this one time. If it's not in black and white and it's not based on fact, you shouldn't be making that um, decision. Good physical condition, well, you're going to have to crawl around or crawl up on things, so it helps if you're in good physical condition. Good vision, of course, you need to see. The weld inspection thing is pretty much based on vision, so if you don't have good vision, it's probably not going to work out so well for everybody. Some more important qualities of weld inspectors. Basic knowledge of welding and welding processes. Well, you're a welding inspector, you should have a pretty good idea of what the welding and welding processes are all about. Doesn't do anybody any good if you have no clue. Um, basic knowledge of NDE processes. You need to understand the processes that are being used to look at and inspect welds. What's going on here? Can you talk to these people? Can you speak their lingo or at least kind of fake your way through it? And by fake your way through it, I don't mean fake, but I mean um, have a, a remedial knowledge that you can talk to the NDE professionals in a, in a manner that makes sense and that, you know, you guys can communicate back and forth. Um, the ability to be trained. Not every welding code is the same. Maybe you spend a couple years doing nothing but AWS D1.1 type work. Then you end up going into, you know, aerospace or, you know, sheet metal or something that's completely different. Ability to be trained to be able to shift gears. Safe work habits. Safe for you, safe for everybody. You know, to make sure that you know you're on a job site and you don't get somebody killed or somebody doesn't get you killed construction is a dangerous place and there's about a million different ways a guy can get hurt or killed on a construction site um, need to be a safe worker generate complete and maintain relevant job records um, that's a huge portion a huge component of being a weld inspector is writing completing and maintaining job records um, part of this job is bookkeeping and being able to write in uh, a manner that other people can read and understand. Can't just throw out something that's gibberish and two lines and say weld good, some kind of Tarzan language. You need to be able to generate, complete, and maintain relevant job records. And that means, you know, writing. A lot of this job is writing, keeping records, writing reports turning in reports, answering questions in a written form, you know, expounding on what your thoughts are, what things that you are trying to um, explain to others, you know, all this ties together. So you need to be able to communicate and you need to be able to, you know, generate, complete, and maintain relevant job records and documents. What does a CWI need to know? Must fully understand and be able to interpret weld drawings, understand and interpret welding and non-destructive testing symbols. Be familiar with the principles of the most commonly used welding processes. Possess a working familiarity with codes that are customarily used in relation to commercial and nuclear facilities and be able to evaluate materials and workmanship as functions of those codes. Be capable of well evaluating welding procedure specifications, WPSs, the supporting procedure qualification records, PQRs, as well as welder performance qualifications in relation to their applications. Possess a working knowledge of the basic characteristics of the more commonly used ferrous metals, their shapes, identification, as well as the codes and standards that govern their quality. Understand the nature of weld filler metals, protective fluxes, or gases, proper control and handling, and the governing codes and specifications. 
possess a working familiarity with the scope and limitations of the most commonly used methods of weldment testing. Pretty much throws it all out there. You got to have a pretty good solid body of knowledge to be a CWI. That's a lot of information. So, but most people going into this have a pretty good bo body of knowledge in their possession. So, just need to put it all together, take the test, and go. But this is what you need to know. This is what the job is. Cash. This is an acronym that's thrown out in um, one of the figures in the Weld Inspection Technology book. Knowledge, attitude of a professional, skills, habits and safe and good work ethic. Knowledge, you're going to need knowledge of drawings and specifications. You're going to need to be able to dig through drawings. A lot of times you'll be called upon to make a, a decision on a drawing you've just looked at three minutes ago. Or somebody's going to bring you a, a question on a specification. You're going to need to be able to dig through a specification and find an answer. Uh, knowledge. Knowledge of welding processes. Somebody's going to ask you something about a filler material or um, something like that. Or a, a process. Can we do this? Heat inputs. Whatever. So you need knowledge. You need a good strong base knowledge of welding processes and procedures. Knowledge of testing methods, you know, uh, things like tensils, sharpies, NDE, those kinds of um, pieces of knowledge are great to have as a weld inspector. Attitude of a professional. You need to be professional. You need to show that your professionalism, you're the referee. You can't be out there um, acting in less than a professional manner. You need to be the referee. You need to show professionalism. You need to show that, hey, I'm here to do a job in a professional manner. I work for the public. Let's get this done and move on. But it needs to be in a professional manner. Ethical, fair, consistent, everything from facts. You can't be willy-nilly or just um, picking one side because you used to work for this company or picking the other side because you used to work for the other company and you hate them and they're going to pay. It needs to be professional. It needs to be fair. Skills. You need to bring some skills to the table. Um, training in engineering and metallurgy, inspection experience, welding experience. You need to bring a skill set to the, to the table. You know, this stuff is invaluable because you're going to be out there and no two jobs are going to be the same. And a lot of times you're going to have to help solve a problem. Welding, the welding universe is chucked full of problems, things that can go wrong. And a lot of times you will be part of the solution. You might not be the part of the solution every time, but if you bring a lot of... Uh, you know, training and inspection experience and welding experience to the table, it, it's beneficial to all parties involved. Habits, safe work, um, safe and good work ethic. You know, that's construction, you don't, you don't want somebody else not to be able to go at home at night, and I'm pretty sure you want to go home at night after the job's done. So, you know, safe and good work ethic. Good work ethic, if you tell somebody you're going to be somewhere, you do it. If you tell them you're going to write a report in a certain manner, you do it. Show up on time. All these things are um, part of good work ethic. And most uh, people are pretty have a pretty good work ethic. So, But anyways, this is cash. This is what you are expected to bring to the table as a welding engine, uh, inspector, a certified weld inspector. Inspectors. I snagged this out of an Army technical manual because I liked the verbiage on this and the way it was written. They put the Army and Navy, have, they buy a lot of things that are welded and they weldeth a lot of things. So they've been doing a lot of this material joining stuff for 100 years. So they've got a pretty clear cut definition of inspectors and what an inspector needs to do. So I took this. Um, the inspector must uphold all quality criteria as defined in applicable specifications, codes, standards, and contract documents. 
The weld inspector must judge whether the weldments inspected conform in all respects to the specifications. The inspector must know the limitations of the testing methods, the material, and the welding process. Ideally, the inspector also must have integrity and be willing to accept the responsibilities of the position. You know, that pretty much lays out what a certified weld inspector needs to do. Um, granted, this, there's no, there, this does not govern the CWI process, but the, the way it's written pretty much is spot on for what a CWI needs to do. You know, be willing to accept the responsibilities of the position. Sometimes you're not going to be popular. Sometimes you're going to have to make a decision that makes a lot of people mad and they're going to scream bloody murder and they're going to have to grind off paint and it's going to cost them money. But you need to do it because it's the right thing to do. You are the guy that works for the public. Um, it's an ethics thing. It's a professionalism thing. Sometimes doing the right thing is the thing that hurts the most. So. This is uh, something we need to keep in mind as CWI. Inspection and responsibilities. Responsibilities associated with being a certified weld inspector are broad in scope, independent in nature, and detailed in application. A certified welding inspector needs a comprehensive knowledge of the commonly used visual inspection processes to verify that appropriate material and workmanship standards are applied to the work. Okay, what's this mean? responsibilities associated with being a weld inspector are broad in scope. It, this is all over the board. You can sometimes do material inspections, weld inspections. Uh, I mean there's innumerable things where you could get called out to do. Independent in nature. You're out there on your own. You need to make an independent call. Gets back to ethics, professional knowledge, professionalism. Independent in nature. And detailed in application. Detailed in application means you've got to be able to read through some pretty convoluted documents, contracts, specifications, um, whatever leads you down the path for acceptance criteria. They're pretty detailed documents. And then you get to our second bulleted item. You need a comprehensive knowledge of you know, visual inspection processes to verify appropriate material and workmanship standards are applied to the work. Pretty self-explanatory. You know, these are all the things that you need to bring to the table as a weld inspector. So, things to keep in mind. Responsibilities continued. Must fully understand and be able to interpret weldment drawings, understand and interpret welding and non-destructive testing symbols, he shall be familiar with the principles and applicability of several most commonly used welding processes. He shall possess a working familiarity with codes that are customarily used in relation to various industries and to be able to evaluate materials and workmanship as function of those codes. And we keep hitting this over and over and we've seen it on multiple slides but you know um, welding processes you know codes standards be able to um, understand, you know, working familiarity. Understand how these and how to apply them. Be able to read them and say, no, that doesn't apply to this situation. Or, yes, that does apply. This is, uh, this is relevant and we're going to follow this standard. Or, no, this isn't relevant to this situation and we're not going to follow it. So, a lot of reading and a uh, lot of interpretation. Welding and non-destructive testing symbols, another huge one. You'll be asked all the time, what, what is this welding symbol? What does this NDE symbol stand for? What are we doing here? So, more responsibilities. This whole welding inspector thing is just chocked full of responsibilities. Be capable of evaluating welding procedures and welder performance qualifications in relation to their applications. He shall possess a working knowledge of the basic characteristics of the more commonly used ferrous metal construction shapes and their identification and the codes or standards that govern their quality. He shall understand the nature of weld filler metals, protective fluxes or gases, proper control and handling, and the governing codes and specifications. 
He shall possess a working familiarity with the scope and limitations of the most commonly used methods of weldment testing. Once again, these are pretty, uh, pretty self-explanatory, but if you're going to be a welding inspector, you should have a pretty good uh, understanding of welding and what's going on. So um, this just lays it out what, you, what your responsibilities will be and some things that you should know before you have the job or um, take these responsibilities. Industries using weld inspection. Uh, you start looking at the amount of things that are welded in our society. Everything's welded. Not everything, but a lot of things are welded. Huge amounts of things are welded. Construction. Think of bridges, skyscrapers, buildings. All kinds of things are welded and need weld inspection. Pipelines, sewer lines, whatever food processing, plants, aerospace, lots of welding going on there. You know, planes, I'm not intimately familiar with what gets welded in aerospace, but there's a lot of things that uh, get welded in aerospace. Power generation, um, you know, power plants, everything in a power plant is welded. There's po uh, thousands of welds in every power plant, you know, from pressure vessels to steam lines to condensate lines to the structural components all kinds of welds there nuclear nuclear power plants have thousands and thousands of welds there too ultra critical welds pressure vessels welded chemical industry welded transportation bridges railroad cars cars lots of things in transportation are welded um, military, boats, think of an aircraft carrier, a nuclear submarine. How many thousands of welds are done on one of those uh, particular applications? Thousands and thousands of welds. So these are all places where weld inspection, you can come across weld inspection. So, And you can see there isn't a thing on this list that isn't very, very important or that somebody's lives aren't on the line. I used to work in a foundry and we did a lot of stuff for military, but I just would tell the welders, hey, somebody, this is going on a submarine. And not that they weren't cognizant of it, but I was kind of preaching to the choir type of deal. But you throw out the fact that, hey, the, what we're doing is very important. It might not seem important, but it's important because this could be the thing that, you know, if this weld fails, for whatever application it is, 200 guys go to their death or, you know, something goes wrong on a casting for a nuclear situation and it was our fault. You've just created the next Fukushima or Chernobyl. So, you know, these are important things and the weld inspector is a very important component in making sure that these things are done correctly. These welds are done correctly and the person that's buying the welded component gets what they asked for and the public at large gets something that's safe. I don't want to think about a weld every time I'm driving over a bridge in Alabama or Idaho or Iowa or something. I have a base uh, faith in the people that weld it and inspected it that that weld is good and I'm going to be able to drive my truck across that bridge and not fall into the river. Determination of weld quality. A lot of times this turns into a uh, point of contention on jobs where one party thinks that weld quality should be at this level and another party, interested party, says no, this, it needs to be at this level. We're, these are handrails. It doesn't need to be inspected to this level of quality. So you need to be able to determine that. You need to be a part of the process. Um, de determination of applicable weld quality according to applicable codes, standards, and contract documents. This all gets back to reading and understanding and understanding wiggle words like shall, can, may, or, not, would, should. Um, it's basic English, but 
you need to be able to determine what's applicable and what's not. What counts here, what's not. What rules are we following for this particular weld and what are we not. You need to understand and apply various documents to the job. That gets back to being able to read and then put forth your um, opinions of what needs to be done you know, for the various documents. Uh, acceptable quality requirements. You know, what, is, what are the acceptable quality requirements? What is good for this situation? What needs to be done? What does, the, what does the code require? What does the contract document require? What do the customer specifications require? All those need to be applied and understood that some things are um, applicable and some things aren't. So you need to be able to read and understand and convey your opinions and thoughts to others in a manner that you know helps your side or um, helps determine what the weld quality should be. Rules for etiquette for reports. This is a, a biggie because a lot of individuals that might be coming out of the craft, the trades, you know, you were a welder, now you're going to be a CWI. You're going to be doing a lot more paperwork than you did before. And you're going to be writing reports. So it needs to be, you got it, you kind of got to take it back to seventh or ninth grade English and be able to write in complete sentences, you know, so somebody else can read it. So you can read it two years down the road when this thing goes sideways or you've got to answer questions in court or somebody wants to know what was going on here. You want to make it as concise and complete as possible. Ink or typewritten reports. Now we've got computers. It's not like we're in 1979 and we're handwriting things. Yeah, you can still uh, write things in ink with hand, but most are uh, on computers nowadays. So you should be writing in complete sentences. Don't be using smiley faces and instead of spelling out Y-O-U, use U or little abbreviations that, you know, a teenager would use while texting their girlfriend or whatever. Complete sentences. Professionalism. Um, errors on handwritten portions should be a single line out, initial, and date. I'm kind of, this is my opinion, but that was beaten into me when I was in the service 30 years ago, the Navy. Hand, handwritten portions, single line out, initial date. Write something new. Do not use whiteout. I was in the nuclear universe for years, and they it was the worst thing ever if you even thought of using whiteout. If they even saw a bottle of whiteout, they'd go off the rails. No whiteout. Whiteout doesn't help anybody gets back to professionalism. Just nuke it and start over if it gets that bad. Uh, attach pictures and sketches when appropriate. You know, there's some uh, pretty good little drawing programs like LibreOffice or OpenOffice. They've got a little uh, sketching program. I think LibreCAD is another free CAD program. But, you know, with the advent of pictures in today's society, the advent of pictures, cell phones, and the ease that you can rattle off 50 pictures and download them and email them across the planet. Completely different from when a lot of us were growing up and you had to take pictures and you took them to one hour photo and you hoped that they turned out. You can attach pictures and sketches and mark them up. There's ways to mark up photos that, you know, put a little arrow that says, okay, here's a crack or here's the porosity. This is why I cut it out. Um, you know, writing these reports with a computer, if you've got a laptop and a couple of programs on there, you could put together a pretty good report. Sign and date all documents. That's a pretty, pretty standard thing. And if you can't, if somebody can't read your signature, it doesn't hurt to sign your, uh, to put your, write your name in block letters underneath it so that they know who did it, you know. Leave them a little trail of breadcrumbs. That's what a lot of this rules of etiquette for reports is. It's leaving a trail of breadcrumbs so that if something goes sideways, somebody can look it up and say, ah, that's why we cut out those 512 welds. 
because, oh, and here's all the pictures. They're in the report that the guy wrote, that, and he clearly showed, you know, that this was weld 23 and there's porosity and cracks all through this thing. That's why we cut it out. So these are all pretty good ideas, rules of etiquette for report writing. Professionalism. Kind of beat this into your head because this this is part of the the deal with being a CWI is you're going to be writing a lot of reports, writing them, reviewing them, rewriting them. So, ethical requirements of the inspector. You know, this gets back to I, soapbox again. I'm going to step up on the soap soapbox and kind of rant for a minute about honesty, integrity. And, you know, you look at what, what's the difference between the United States and Canada or Western Europe and, you know, the developing, the developing world. Well, lack of corruption to me is a big one. You look at um, a lot of these places where they have problems and they'll have some awful disaster and it's because the inspector was bought off or you know they didn't use the right kind of concrete or they had bad welds or whatever to me that's what separates us from western society from the rest of the planet is honesty integrity lack of corruption and as a weld inspector you need to be honest you need to have huge amounts of integrity and you got you need to realize that you are responsible to the public if we look at the slide that lists the industries that use welding inspection Every one of them ties back to the public, the guy living next door to you. Do you want to live next to a power plant where all the weld inspectors were paid off to allow shoddy welds to go in? I don't. I don't want to drive across a bridge that the, the, the weld inspection crew didn't have, you know, the wasn't extremely honest and didn't have a lot of integrity. I want guys that are honest and have a lot of integrity doing this kind of work. I want guys that aren't afraid to be unpopular. Guys that aren't, people that aren't afraid to tell, hey, that weld is bad. I don't care if you're my brother or my best friend from high school. You are going to cut that out and we're going to do it over. Honesty and integrity. The responsibility of the public. And here's another one. If you're making statements to the public, statements should contain facts only. If you're on the evening news, don't go off on a rant about, you know, something that can't be tied to facts. So it's better off to just clam up and say nothing if you don't have anything to say that isn't based on fact. The inspector as a communicator cannot emphasize this enough. You're a person that's going to interact with all kinds of different levels of an organization as you do your duties. Um, you need to listen. You need to listen to the engineers, the supervisors, the foremen, the people making the welds, the NDE inspectors, other weld inspectors. You need to, there needs to be a continuous loop in the feedback. You're providing feedback, you're providing um, communication, lines of communication between the front lines and maybe people that don't get out there. And you need to tell the people up the food chain, hey, this is what's going on. Things aren't right out there and I put a hold on it until things are fixed. But you need to communicate why. This, 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 and this. This needs to be fixed. This is why. You need to be receptive to the opinions of others. You know, uh, there's more than one way to skin a cat. So a lot of times other people have an opinion and you might not agree with it, but you can listen to it and maybe incorporate some of what they have to say into what you're going to try and get accomplished. You need to establish lines of communication. When you get on the job, you need to establish lines of communication between who you're working for, what you're inspecting, what you're looking at, you know, and who's going to be doing what duties. And then if there's a situation where uh, the 
the welds need to be cut out or some there's a defect, you need to be able to communicate to the appropriate prior parties, hey, this is what's wrong, here's the um, non-conformance report or here's the disposition of this defect, what do we do, need to do to get it fixed? So as a weld inspector, communications are important, be it written or verbal. So you need to establish the lines of communication and really embrace the role of the inspector as the communicator because you're going to be in the middle of a lot of things. And if you can communicate effectively, it makes the job go a lot easier. Personnel certification programs. Many programs are available to determine whether an individual has the required experience and knowledge to perform welding inspection effectively. The American Society for Non-Destructive Testing, ASNT, has guidelines for certification of NDT personnel. That's ASNT TC1A. That's the document which describes the recommended procedures for certifying inspectors performing non-destructive testing. ASNT has three certification levels, level one, two, and three. Level one, you're basically an apprentice. You're learning the, the ropes, um, and as soon as you get another uh, enough hours built up and a body of knowledge, then you can take the test for level two. Level two is you can disposition things. You, you actually make the call. Level one can't make the call. And level three, he's the guru. He's the guy that writes the procedures, um, gives everybody their tests. He's the guy. Um, depending on the amount of experience and education you have, you can get to a level three. Personnel certification programs continued. Um, AWS QC1 um, standards for certification of welding inspectors. This is the document that establishes the requirements for AWS certification of welding inspection personnel, the CWI. Um, AWS has three different levels of certification in AWS QC1. You've got the lowest level, which is the certified associate welding inspector. Um, then you've got the certified weld inspector, the CWI, and then you've got the senior certified welding inspector. The certified associate, he can't really inspect welds. He can, but he's got to work under the supervision of a certified weld inspector. A CWI, he can just be turned loose to operate independently. And then a senior certified welding inspector is a person that would uh, supervise certified weld inspectors or certified associate weld inspectors. Steps for certification as a CWI. Well, you're going to need documentation of relevant educational and work experience. Document of candidates years of welding related experience with a code or a specification. Obviously, you want a welding inspector that's got some experience with welding. We don't want to take somebody that's a hairdresser and turn them loose as a weld inspector. Nothing against hairdressers, but I chose that as a an example because it's probably the furthest thing from being a welder that there is. Maybe a bartender. Uh, I don't know. But anyways, whatever you want to pick, you need some some relevant experience in welding industries and with a code or a specification. Just welding on farm equipment at Fred's Bar and Grill and tractor repair in Ottumwa, Iowa is probably not going to get you there. It, you need a code or a specification. Hey, I've done code work. I've been worked to a specification. I understand quality control. I understand that, you know, not just a weld is a weld is a weld. That there's some factors out there that, you know, ca are cause for rejection. There's certain uh, defects um, that are uh, that are rejectable. Um, and these, these, this all plays in into you know your experience as a CWI, or you know docu documenting the relevant educational and work experience. So that's one of the first things.
required experience. Candidate with a high school education, either by diploma, state, or military equivalents, must have at least five years experience. Individual with eighth grade schooling are required to have not less than 10 years job experience to qualify for the examination. For individuals with less than eighth grade schooling, not less than 15 years is required. Summary, module one. Okay, so what did we cover here? We covered who is the welding inspector? The overseer, it's a specialist in regards to welding subject matter. Um, combination overseer specialist. You know, we talked about the qualities of a weld Unlike a lot of other programs, we've got it set up so that you can do it a la carte. Um, if you only need to, you know, we've got different parts of the CWI course broken out. So if you don't need to sit through and take safe practices for welding inspectors or you have some strengths that you know of and you want to streamline the process and only hit the sections where you don't really have a strong or strong background or a great deal of proficiency. Our program is set up so you can take some of these parts of the CWI online course a la carte. Pick and choose, put together what you want. Leave the rest, like a Chinese food buffet. We've got one section where it's questions, questions, and more questions. Um, we've got a whole number of CWI self-study question bank, 40 bucks. Come on in, take it, take a look, see. Um, if you just need questions, if you sat through another course and you just want to keep hitting the material, check out our uh, question bank, 40 bucks.